So hi, uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, I am here in Dramsala uh, in Norbu House. I wanted to also thank uh, the Norbu House Hotel here, um, being very kind, uh, letting me use uh, office here to do the Facebook uh, Live tonight. Um, and also, uh, uh, as you all know, that uh, um, the prayers, um, the preparation for cremation for His Holiness is going on. And uh, I know that a uh, number of our Sabu uh, and Sangha worldwide are uh, planning to come to India to Mary Monastery and also a number of students from Ligmicha. Uh, are coming so uh, I am looking forward to see you all uh, those you are coming to in Mary Monastery uh, soon and also um, on the 2nd of October uh, the day of cremation uh, we are um, having the Cyber Sangha, the Ligmita International Sangha. Uh, our President Rob will be um, making a little, little statement and then also Geshe Dema and Marcy will be guiding practices on at the same time when the cremation will be happening in India. So I know that uh, uh, many people are preparing for this so I, I would strongly recommend to uh, all of you to attend this online um, the gathering for prayer for His Holiness. So um, yeah, so so today's uh, conversation is part of our the the pit instruction of personal reflection of the Dzogchen. So I just wanted to say a few words about you know these, uh, all these different pit instructions that I've been, I have done few of them and will continuously be doing that, just to say a little bit about that. So the pit instructions are not uh, particularly coming out of one text or um, one type of teaching. The, so uh, pit instructions are a little bit more really like a, a personal reflection so that I um as as a practitioner as a teacher um i when i teach when i people ask me questions um when i trying to answer when i reflecting on things so there are many things um it's ongoing reflection in my own life in my own practices development and so somehow sometime some of these um uh, the essential points that what I feel is important is is what that's what what I would like trying to share, not entire teaching or text or anything like that. So something that I I currently reflect things in life and experiences. These are things some of things that I'm trying to share. Um, so, but but these pit instructions for clearly, if you say. Is it more related with a specific type of teaching, but not a specific type of text? But uh, I would say, I would say this is more related with the Dzogchen uh, tradition of meditation. Uh, this is uh, the great perfection tradition of great perfection, um, because I really, really uh, feel and I uh, I see it. I have some experiences. I realize that that the Dzogchen teaching is something very um, accessible, applicable, uh, it's a current, it addresses a very collective society's issue. Uh, it is also a, a, a teaching that I think beyond uh, tradition, culture, religion, uh, so some sense I think there's a more uh, openness uh, and and inclusive 
from with all the traditions. I think this is, I think, one of the best uh, points that I personally like about it. So, so therefore, the teaching is more based on the Dzogchen, I would say. And in the Dzogchen, and the great perfection, the view, it's, uh, we say, view is boundless, so that means uh, uh, no conditions, and the meditation is self-clear, that means it's more spontaneous, experiences in life should be more spontaneous, um, not planned, uh, not planned with one's pain, fear, uh, limitations, but uh, able to be open to to the moment, whatever gift and potentiality that moment offers in our life, which is far more, far better than we plan or we plan through our pain and fears, for example. And then whatever there's some, some sense of flexibility, the behavior, conduct comes out of it, usually there is much more uh, successful, um, enlightening, productive, then, you know, we, uh, the behaviors which comes out of a plan and specifically plan with the fear and hope and, um, yeah, so, so, so that is the, uh, very much based on this teaching. So, but particularly during this, during this evening here, uh, we are talking about realizing your potential by connecting to the source. So realizing your potential, connecting to the source, I think uh, it is very, very important for all of us because I uh, truly believe that each one of us, if we look at very closely in our life, uh, we have not uh, yet arrived that place. We are not even closer to that place where we can say, I, I have reached my highest aspect I have connected to my highest aspect. I am seeing the world from my highest as aspect. I am acting in the world from my highest aspect. Or I am, um, you know, uh, doing things from that place. No, I think we are not even close to that. So that, that means we have so much more uh, to go in order to, to, to be in that place and live in that place and uh, see from that place and have act from that place benefit from that place so 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 con realizing your potential by connecting to the source so connecting to the source i think that's very very important so so let's think about some examples in our life let's think about each one of us in our own life uh, for example, uh, I feel sometimes when I'm traveling around the world, teaching people, when I'm observing people, listening to people, um, it feels like uh, sometimes we, we are not fully take responsible for ourselves. We are not fully self-responsible in our life. Um, something uh, goes wrong in your life, something go, goes wrong in, in the community, in the society, in the country, and then immediately, collectively, individually, we, we target one person, we blame one individual, that it is a fall of that individual, either the president of the country, or, or the president of the company, or is the director of the, like a specific um, organization or so on. So some sense of, or some in a smaller scale, uh, individuals that in, even in your life that something went wrong in your life, something you don't feel uh, able to ma manifest fully in your life, then you totally blame something for in some cases your parents, for example, some cases your sister, uncle, someone, basically someone other than yourself. There's someone out there seems like a fully responsible of your life and they did not do what they're supposed to do. They messed it up your life. Now they have to be totally responsible. And of course, you probably you don't think that way, but somehow where people behave, it looks like they are kind of see that way, feel that way, 
they look looks like they are acting like that. So in some sense, not saying I have to be responsible in my life and I need to, to focus in my life. I have the power to change course of my life. I wanted to make the decision. Uh, I wanted to uh, not allow people to make decision for me. So some sense of really strong sense of um, empowering yourself, uh, being in charge of your own life and not allowing things for others to do take or take advantage of things or not even inviting, being open to it, something that you don't want. So being responsible for yourself, I think, so that is, I do feel, uh, and sometimes it is important because sometimes uh, it seems like uh, some people uh, waste so much of their precious life, the precious moments of their life by just simply blaming somebody. So much time has spent and uh, thinking, uh, repeating those thoughts, discussing with the people, complaining and blaming someone for your life, what happened in your life. So I think uh, that is, I, I truly believe uh, that it's a waste of a waste of time, very precious time. Instead, just take in charge, be responsible, make your own decision, move on your own direction that you wanted to move on. But but of course, you need to, to be careful. Whatever environment, the people that you engage with, if you don't want it to allow. If you don't want to allow, no one can hurt you. But if somebody does hurt you, you are partly responsible for being too open to that. And so, of course, some cases, some people might be very weak, but I'm talking in a general sense, I think we, we have to learn a little bit to be self-responsible. Um, So the other thing is, I think, um, connecting to the source and and realizing realizing this uh, potentiality, you know, one's own potentiality, connecting to the source. I think it's somehow a very very important part of the uh, in our life. So, uh, um, for example, uh, sometime. Uh, if you look at it in your life, um, there is so much that you are potential, you have potentiality that you can be doing, that you can be developing, and uh, you do have that power within you. And uh, if you don't engage and waste so much time looking out and com criticizing other people for your life, then I think this is, that is a definitely it's a very very good good start, um, and sometimes we ourselves become an uh, obstacle for ourselves. For for example, if you think that you're not capable, people say uh, I don't know, uh, I'm not good enough, and uh, I am not worth for this, uh, I cannot do it, and I have never done it. And I even even don't think about doing it or something like that. So basically, um, limiting yourself. Maybe that is, that is the point. Limiting yourself by yourself. If somebody else says you cannot do, that's a different story. Uh, and maybe you try it and you find the reality, you're facing the reality, you're facing the challenges, you're facing the obstacle, you're facing, you're facing circumstances that is, you really feel it's difficult, then it's a different story. But when you, even you have not opened yourself up, even you have not trying to be curious about something, even you have not try, uh, trying to explore some possibility, you have not tried, and you just right from the beginning, you close to that dimension, that possibility, that infinite possibility. You say, "I'm not worth. I'm not good," and that is like a very much like a being a obstacle for yourself. I think many many cases, we are, we become 
obstacle for ourselves. We are sometimes obstacle for ourselves. We are blockages of that infinite possibility in our life. Uh, and then it, and slightly something happened where somebody does something, then we immediately blame somebody else for that. I think so. What I'm trying to really make a point is, don't waste your time blaming somebody else. Be in charge, be responsible, and connect to, you, connect to your source, to yourself, and find and connect with that infinite possibility and trust something inside yourself that you are capable of. And with that trust, explore new things. Try new things in your life. Um, not stuck in the same thing. Try new things. Uh, I don't know, uh, new, new areas, maybe learn new language or um, trying to explore different possibility, uh, music, poetry, art, um, different profession, different, different learning, different things, uh, exploring different interests, exploring your sense of self and, you know, living, trying to live more fully and just new things, exploring new things by not just exploring new things, by just uh, getting restless and trying to do something, but exploring new things in a sense of exploring your expansion of yourself. And when, you've, when you have some sense of uh, a boundless view or boundless a sense of self, at least uh, less boundary than you used to be, then that you are expanding your sense of self. A, a self-perception -per is expanding than uh, last year, year before. So your sense of self, the bottom line is, uh, you, question, you ask question to yourself, am I expanding my sense of self this year from the last year or year before? If your sense of self is not expanding, then there's something you got to pay attention because if, you're, if your sense of self is narrow down, narrowing down, and if you feel more limitation, you feel more blocked, you feel more problematic, you feel the world is getting smaller, becoming more problem and obstacle for yourself. The direction is clearly not going the right direction. But if your sense of self is expanding the like view of Dzogchen, the boundless view, so expansion of self, expansion of view, expansion of interest, expansion of service, expansion of feeling the flexibility, Exp expand, feeling, uh, connecting with what you are capable of and feeling some sense of more freedom within yourself. I think that is uh, some sense of direction where you do want to move. So, so basically uh, not become obstacle or problem for yourself. Uh, you not becoming you yourself an obstacle for a problem you to yourself. Uh, trying to connect to connect with your potentiality to through your true source. Uh, so the maybe just one thing maybe it's important to remember, and I've been uh, disc talking that about that a little bit about um, this sense of uh, you know there are people who would who might say after hearing me they would say well I. I've been trying so hard in my life, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, succeeding things that I wanted to succeed. Or I, I've been, um, I, I want a great healing with my parents and uh, it is not happening the way I wish. I want to have some closure with some situation in my, my life. I'm trying so hard, it's not happening. I wanted to feel sense of peace in my life and I'm working so hard and trying so hard, I'm not feeling that sense of peace. Uh, also, some sense of uh, you, you, you're trying so hard to find something and you're not finding it. So that core down, it comes to that place, you're trying so hard. So the point we're trying to raise here is uh, recognize and rest, but not trying so hard. So this is, this is I think it's very important to see, um, recognize, in, for example, right this very moment, if you look at in your life, so just just for a moment, let's slow down. Take a deep breathing. Uh, breathe it out. Any discomfort? A 
reflect in your life. Observe all the challenge, effort, trying, and but feeling that you are not accomplishing like a healing with somebody, resolving conflict with somebody. with the family members, friends. Just basically reflect and recognize the efforts that you put, too much effort that you put. So tell yourself, for now, for some time, I am going to rest I recognize that I put too much effort from wrong place, not boundless place, not open place, not open enough place, but more from fear, more from pain, more from that expectations, trying too hard for too long and it's not working, so now for now, I recognize and I will give permission to myself, I allow myself to take a break, to take a rest. Obviously, resting by connecting to stillness in your body, connecting to hearing and connecting feeling the silence, basically connecting to your source, to yourself. When you truly connecting to the source, to yourself, long enough, and when you become familiar with that space, sacred space, connected enough to that source, you will clear those effort, those fear blockages, and gradually you will see and feel the potentiality, the possibility, the infinite possibility. And trusting yourself that you will be able to manifest from that infinite possibility, the space, infinite possibility, space, which is far more than current life, far more the how you see yourself, far more than how you see the world, how you see the potentiality, how you connect with certain things, how you make decisions, how you act, how you accomplish, how much you accomplish. Everything will change if you connect to that place. Just for a moment, reflect that and rest continuously. I will sing the Akar Sale Mantra for a few times. Just feel rest in that meditation, connection to the Source, and seeing the infinite possibility.
far more than now trusting that uh, Okay. So uh, I hope uh, this short meditation is just a little taste. So I hope all of you um, somehow recognize a little bit how much we waste time. Just I'm trying to summarize here how much time we waste criticizing someone else for our life, what that, what's not happening in our life, rather than taking in charge and being responsible and seeing your potentiality and trusting that and connecting with that and manifesting from there and you know you can do it, but rather than uh, wasting so much, not doing that and wasting so much time, so much precious time by just complaining somebody, even you know, yeah. So it's, it doesn't. There's no benefit of doing that. So we just rec that clear recognition. I hope that's clear recognition of that, and also a clear recognition of some things that we have been trying in our life with so much effort. So much effort. It's not one week, one month, one year. A pattern has been years and some cases in some one specific things that expecting uh, somebody to take in take care of you or some some changes should happen in someone or, or somebody should apologize in you or somebody should love you or somebody should do something for you waiting for something or expecting something getting angry at somebody uh, putting so much energy and effort for a long time it's a time to recognize 
just let it go and and not wait any more and not waste your time and energy expecting any more let it go by recognizing of course how you let it go through th three precious pills stillness silence spaciousness and going doing that meditation connecting to your s source who you are and from that place who you are when you're trying to connect with your who you are more and more i hope that your perception of your self or your sense of yourself it is expecting a year by year becoming a bigger and bigger more open and more open and less boundaries and and more freedom and connecting more to that source to see your potentiality trusting that potentiality and trying to manifest something from there as something new something fun something for service as something for social social change but with that in that uh, from that place uh, with that uh, trust and uh, with sense of flexibility but not uh, fighting uh, but more sense with peace, uh, exploring yourself and the world and your capacity, your your inf possibility. I hope that is your all, all um, happening in your life. Um, so maybe the last thing I would just want to say is, I as you know I emphasize all of these quite a bit uh, again and again throughout my teachings, and I think uh, one thing I realize. Uh, particularly in the sometime in the West, um, people who whose their spiritual practice and their their life, so their spiritual practice, their um, individuality or personal life, they're kind of parallel, but they're not connected. I, I have ad addressed this before, and people who do in the, especially like. A, um, uh, people who are practicing Dharma, uh, following uh, Bhagavan teaching, Buddhist teaching, following Dharma, and I think sometimes um, the teaching that you are trying to follow and your life are also not exactly uh, connected to each other. They are not, they are not necessarily connected to each other. They are not necessarily uh, in, helping each other. Uh, rather, they are parallel, parallel and disconnected. And particularly, your personal life is not helping your spiritual practice. Your spiritual life is not helping your personal life. So they are kind of disconnected to each other. I think that is, I, I see it's really, really important. Um, a true development should, should be connected. A per, uh, personal growth should be connected to your spiritual growth. A spiritual growth should be connected with your social growth. Social growth means uh, who you are uh, in the society and what you uh, what you do in the society should be it should have positive impact in the society because your spiritual um, uh, practices having impact on your personal life. So your spiritual life is helping your personal growth and personal growth is impacting your surrounding, your environment, your social, your social uh, works, uh, social connections. So, so in the end, somehow, some con social contributions, changes in the society. I think that's absolutely going uh, need to happen and will happen without any doubt when they are internally connected, personal, spiritual, and social growth. They are, when they are connected to each other. So, I, I think some sense of uh, it's important to be aware that how they are connected to each other, and, and sometimes I don't mean the so, so, social doesn't mean something very big, but even sometimes within a family, uh, how you how you are in your family uh, should impact your spiritual practice. How you are in your spiritual practice should impact how you are with your family, your friends, and so on. So I think these. In the end of the day, that everything needed to be connected to each other, not be disconnected. And connection 
when they are connected to each other, then there is a growth, a true sense of growth, spiritual growth. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, uh, so I hope that all of you will be gathering together um, on, a, on a Cyber Sangha on, a, uh, on the second and the cremation day uh, with the Limitri International, I think, Facebook page. And uh, then those who are coming, all the, our Sangha and Sangha members who are coming to, to Menri Monastery, I look forward to seeing you all, all there. I, as you all know, I am in Dharamsala right now. And I, since uh, last time I came to India, um, as you all know, I am fortunate enough to uh, able to, I feel this a true um, karmic a connection uh, that um, you know which sometimes you plan things does not happen so able to visit his holiness before he passed away uh, able to touch his feet receive his blessings and then um, then I after in afternoon uh, able to see him in meditation position and able to offer my processions and uh, prayer and I was feel so lucky able to do that and spend a five day there. So then I I was traveling a little bit, and I haven't since I came to India last since last time I have not visited Singe my son yet. So, but uh, I have not uh, told him. So even I know that I'm sharing here in the Facebook, but I know he does not have access to the Facebook or internet in the school here. So uh, I'm I'm my wife and me. We are going to visit him tomorrow. Um, surprise visit. He does not know I am coming, and we are also uh, cooking for all the. There's about 30 kids in the the school where he's living. We are offering uh, dinner. We are we are preparing for dinner. We're going to cook and offer uh, a dinner for all the kids and little birthday. He's a 12 12 year old. So a little birthday cake for him with all the kids that he is staying here with. So so I kind of am looking forward to see him. I haven't seen last three months, so tomorrow will be the first time I'll be seeing him. And uh, yeah, so um, thank you very much. Just a little bit personal story. And uh, I look forward to see you all next week. Um, so uh, next week... Uh, around the same time, but I will let on the Facebook, uh, I will make the announcement, but uh, it will be on Wednesday, uh, same time. So I, w I will make the announcement, but just uh, same time, so we will do another Facebook Live next week, okay? Thank you very much, and uh, good night, everybody, or good morning. Uh, all my love and blessings.